talking to me? You talking to me? There seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? <laughs> what an idiot! Well, what do you expect? I'm the movie moron. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Don't call me stupid. Oh, right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! I've known sheep that could outwit you. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> No, none yeah. taken. None taken. Don't worry. There's none taken here. Uh, I am the movie moron, and welcome to a new episode. Um, and with me, as always, is our two uh, two normal people, the practical co-host himself, Trevor. I think we're anything but normal. <laughs> Fair. And then our all-time guest, Tristan. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> well, you guys are siblings, so I guess you're going to think alike, I guess, right? I guess so. Um, yeah, so now you guys get to see our studio because last time we quote unquote did a uh, our first video podcast and it's not even up yet because I have to individually go through and splice it all and it's taking forever and I have a normal job in life. <laughs> um, but hopefully this works out better so I can just straight upload it and have no issues. Uh, but yeah, this is our uh, podcast studio that we got all set up pretty much today to, to look all new. Um, and still working on some decorations still working to yeah. get the decorations up and um i'm sure you can tell uh by my lovely wife's face that she's a little annoyed by how long it took to get everything going but i forgot i was on video, <laughs> video? <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit for all you're of us to get used to this sorry anything, right? uh, no but my face is i wear my emotions <laughs> on my sleeve <laughs> But, you know, um, you're only on video half the time, so you only have to worry about... Good. <laughs> uh, so if I'm talking, you may or Just may not... Just put those little emojis on my face when it's <laughs> not good. Well, we had to use a different program, so those aren't... Dang. Yep, mm. sorry. Uh, that one Checks. didn't let us switch back and forth, which was the whole entire point of what I downloaded it for. But, uh, yeah, today we are going to do a Disney... Uh, movie that came out on Disney Plus uh, called Turning Red. So that's the episode of the week. Which I am a little peeved that there were previews in the theater for this movie. And it's not in AMC. Yeah, I was just thinking about maybe looking that up to see. That's that stupid. Was. I'm not happy about that. That's false advertising right there. Is it? Yeah. No. Oh. All right. Why well, was... I guess red. unless they said... Unless they were like, I think it was originally supposed to come out. Disney Plus. Uh, it, they did say that eventually, uh, but I think it, it wasn't supposed to be. And I think they just, I think they're trying to get more traffic to Disney Plus. Because <laughs> right, right now the biggest attraction is just oh, the Star Wars here we stuff. Go. Turning Red was originally meant to premiere in cinemas on March 11th with Pixar yeah. even reaffirming its plans for a theatrical release in June 2021. However, because of the rise in the Omicron variant. Pre- cases of the covid virus the decision was then made to turn turning red onto a direct streaming release pass i mean come on it's disney that's sounds very disney yeah. to do <laughs> uh okay well uh i guess we should start with uh what we uh what we've been doing for a total of one podcast so far of just some hot takes on pixar oh. did you guys think of anything <laughs> oh what well, this is like a normal thing yeah oh, hot takes of whatever we're doing Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think so. I mean, this is. I mean, we. Talk I don't about get it. Podcast. I think Soul's overrated. Solo. And soul. Oh, Soul. Soul is overrated. Yeah, and I think Encanto is a little overrated too. That's. <laughs> so. <laughs> Those are I, hot takes. I, Encanto was like insane right now. Oh yeah. Like. Well, because it went to street. Nobody went to go see it in the theaters, and then it came to streaming, and now now everyone. The same thing happened with uh. 
uh, was it Tenet? I think there were a couple other yeah. movies that went to streaming like several months later, and then that's when everybody watched it. But those are my hot takes. Well, my hot take is Disney hasn't really been the same since like our childhood when it had like its hot streak oh, with yeah. uh plan uh Treasure Planet and Atlantis and Tarzan and stuff like that. I feel like they've really been on downhill with all those risks like the the movies where they would take the risk to like see if it would work like treasure planet was a little bit of a risk uh just in terms of like just from what i've read like financially and things like that but yeah i agree yeah so uh, yeah uh, my hot take would be that they like the new stuff just hasn't lived up to uh like i think maybe up but even then up isn't even like a it has good moments but uh, as an overall film like the first 10 minutes is good, but then the rest is kind of mediocre. Maybe that's a hot take in itself. But I just can't think of a a Pixar Disney movie that's been, like, out of this world. I I think Raya and the Last Dragon was that for me. It still wasn't quite to the level of, like, those Golden Age ones, but but I think that was probably the closest it had come in the past few years. And I just thought that was decent. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even, like... Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like... Maybe it's because I grew up with Atlantis yeah. and Treasure Planet, but yeah, I just felt like no movie has really been up to that level yeah. um, since. I and I, I guess another hot take would be, uh, and this one's probably more so because a lot of our audience is around our age. So um, I don't think Toy Story lives up. I'll see you later. Uh huh. <laughs> I think the first Toy Story doesn't doesn't live up to like it doesn't it didn't age well is what oh, I'm trying okay. to say. Yeah. The animation is really it's, rough. It's rough. Yeah. It's really rough and I think we remember as like when we were kids and we watched it we overlooked like the dull parts of the movie. There's a lot of really dull stuff. Yeah. In that in that movie. I I watched it like over the past couple months. Yeah. Like several months ago. I don't know if maybe Trent was watching it, so I watched it with him. I have no idea. <laughs> but I remember watching it, and I was like, this doesn't, like, it's not really that good. And then, like, the second one, I think, was really good. And the th- third one, I the think, lived is, up. I, I, the second I think the one, second's I think underrated. Like the perfect sequel. Yes. Like it's, it's very, very good. And it's underrated. Yeah. Because everyone thinks of the first one because of the no intelligent life form and all that kind of stuff. Oh, but yeah. it, I just, and the buzz and Woody, like, but going Toy, back and forth. Toy Story 2, you get, but I don't want to my head <laughs> no no there's there's definitely like really good stuff to it yeah. i just feel like it doesn't like people say it is like a higher echelon like one of the yeah. best disney movies of all time and it's i don't think it's toy story 2 there. has freaking bloopers that they animated and put at the end of the film <laughs> i do not remember that but that's Are awesome oh yeah you got it yeah man they're their choice they're good well tristan you got anything if you don't that's fine I was not. I sprung this on them last minute because I've been informed. Spending two hours trying to get the video stuff working. Um, I guess the only thing that I can think of is that I don't understand people who are like obsessed with Disney, Mm. Disney adults, or just like in general. I mean, adults especially, but (laughs) I just don't get it. I don't want everything that I own to have ears right. of an animated mouse. <laughs> I don't get it. That's that's a good one. What it the obsession of yeah. Mickey Mouse? Yeah, is weird. Yeah, because there hasn't been anything Mickey Mouse in like fifty it's because years. That, I got, you know why? Well, it's because Walt Disney. Like that's yeah. what. Yeah, and that's that's Disney's like op- yeah official, signature. Yeah. 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 But, like, he's everywhere and he's not used at all, which is weird. You know what's funny? Oh, Oh, sorry. Um, On Disney Channel, I watched it all the time growing up. But they they would have an actor or an actress, like, draw draw the the ears. They would draw Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah, Disney Channel. Face, whatever. But uh, when I was a kid, I'm... I'm positive I did not know what that was. Are you serious? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Well, it you probably because that was also their sh- their show like icon. Like it was it was the mouse ears with Disney Channel inside. Mm. And yeah. so maybe that's just you just thought of it as like, like oh that's just the simple. That's part of the their show. logo. Yeah. yeah, basically. Yeah. A bouncy ball with <laughs> extra. <laughs> 
I think that there's a there's a Mickey Mouse show on Disney Plus that's like a like you know Looney Tunes recently did a, a new run. You mean like it's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse? No, no, no. It's it's an animated um. thing. It's a little more out there. It's a little more weird. I can't remember what it's called, but I think it was done in the past few years. But it's supposed to be like satirical a little bit. Let's see if I can find the name real quick. I have no idea. What you're talking about. I just I just seen some memes from it. Okay, well maybe while he's looking that up, uh, I used to do synopsis of the movies, but really just go watch the trailer on Disney Plus or on YouTube. Returning Red. Yeah. yeah. For the movie that we're doing. Um, and we'll kick into general thoughts as Tristan's falling asleep. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I just saw the the eyes uh go crazy. Mine's are really dry because I've been wearing contacts. Oh. It's called The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse. Mm. And, it, and it premiered in 2020. But mm. like, like I said, it's just supposed, it's supposed to be like the new, like, it, it, I think it's supposed to go up against like the new Looney Tunes run. I think it's just satirical and kind of, kind of adult humor a little bit, but it, it, you know, it's just supposed like to be Like Shrek. Weird. Yeah, a little bit, I guess. Which, but. did you guys hear they're remaking Shrek? Yeah. Why? That no, it's perfect. so good. They're, they're getting Donkey from... Or they're getting Eddie, Mur- Eddie Murphy, Murphy for Donkey and, and Carmen Fiona. Diaz. Yeah, Which, they just need to, g- th- but they need to get Shrek. Um, Michael Myers. Yeah, Myers. they need to get Michael Myers. Michael Not Myers. Michael. <laughs> Are they remaking it because the animation is? Shrek I don't is think they're remaking terrible. it. I, think I don't it's think a it's a remake. I didn't think. Wait, it you think was. it's a remaster? If it's a remaster, what does that mean? Remaster means that they just take the same, they take the same exact movie and they just upgrade the graphics of yeah. it. So they just oh, reanimate no, everything. I, no, I don't think it's that. And it's not a sequel. Well, it's not a sequel. It's a remake. They're they're remaking the original story. But it's but that's. But I I think I fell if, asleep to that movie the other day. <laughs> yeah. At Sammy's. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love uh, you, Sammy. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump into uh, Turning Red. I don't think this will be too long of a podcast because... <laughs> it's an hour it, and 40 minutes. Yeah, it's a Disney like movie, that. and I don't have a whole lot of... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. whatever. Um. So, yeah. Just getting into general thoughts. Trevor, what do you what'd you think? I really, really liked it. I I remember watching it and thinking that the animation style looked really familiar, but I couldn't place it. And it wasn't until I got on Twitter later today, actually, that they were, that Toronto was trending, and so was Turning Red, and so was Scott Pilgrim. Toronto? That's where it takes place, at Toronto, Canada. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And they were talking about how uh, how similar, you know how they how they smiled in Turning Red, where it's like the oval, but it's like turned upward yeah, a little bit? Yeah. That's a Scott Pilgrim thing. And so people were thinking that there's like a connection there, like maybe they're inspired a little bit because they both take place in the same location. They both take place hmm. in Toronto, Canada. It's also I, like the most famous city in Canada. Canada so, yeah. but I uh, yeah, I really I really enjoyed my time with it. I uh, I'm seeing a lot of complaints, and I don't know if this is just like I don't know if this is a small group of people just yelling really loudly about it or if it and then people are paying attention to it or not. But I'm hearing a lot of people being like, well, this movie isn't really relatable to me. And people are getting like like hammering them on that criticism. Mm. That it just sense. there was a couple writers uh, uh, kind of when it first came out or were like it was about to premiere. And I think the early people got to saw it. The critics. Yeah. And I think a few people wrote that they felt like this was a movie, like directly for a small, like audience, yeah, like directed yeah. to these specific people. And so, if you're not in this kind of, if you're not in this niche market, then it's not for you. And so, it feels too narrow sure. minded, not narrow minded, but like narrow yeah. focused on its whatever target so, audience. Yes, yeah. yes, that's the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> so but I think that's kind of where that's coming from. Yeah, I don't, and I don't agree with that. But but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I understand. I understand that point, though. I mean, it. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll kind of get into it and in the spoiler right. part of it. But I, I see where they're coming from. Yeah. Like I, definitely felt during a lot of the movie. Not that like it's a bad movie because it isn't a movie that's about me. That's yeah. not what I mean. But I could definitely see that. Uh, it is focused on like, uh, like if if you watch the trailer, it's about a thirteen year old girl, yeah, and like it's kind of really hyper focused on that age group 
mm-hmm. in that gender, and I think that's fine. Yeah. But so I, but I definitely do see where they're coming from. But I don't think it should be like a critique of the movie. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. It, it should be an acknowledgement, not a criticism. Yeah. 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 Well, Tristan, what do you what do you think as you're falling asleep over there in the corner? Um, here's what, I'm also like thinking really hard. It's taking a lot out of me. Um, <laughs> I you're just too comfy over there. That's the problem. I'm I'm pretty comfy actually. Um, better than our last chair in here. Well, yeah, because I'm not falling backwards. <laughs> um, okay, I I liked it. Okay, I don't really ever like care to see it again and um i i think i feel like they're the point of it i i feel like this the reason for the happening i'm trying not to say anything yeah yeah sure was <laughs> well, not to be fair if you everyone knows the general premise that it's a 13 year old girl that turns into a big red okay. panda yeah during a pivotal part of her uh adolescence like yeah. growing us into adult okay. so like if if that's what you're worried about spoiling uh, yeah. I, yeah i, I think worry. you're fine okay yeah so i i feel like what the panda was representing the metaphor what for it? it okay here's the thing <laughs> i'm just gonna say it i would told sammy that we were doing it over this movie and she said oh the movie about the periods mm. or the period and i was like what because I did not get that from the trailer at all. And she said, yeah, my clients told me that that's what it's about. But but I feel like the movie if if it was if the if it was strictly about a period, they didn't do a very good job because it I I agree. I I came into the movie thinking yeah. that like hearing the things that this is supposed to be a metaphor for uh, a woman turning in yeah. or a, a girl turning into a woman and that's sim- that yeah it, in most cultures means when you have your period that's when you're yeah. turning into a woman and they make that like abundantly clear mm-hmm. in the it's movie very obvious <laughs> yeah which yeah. i think is a detriment to the movie because that's if it's supposed to be a metaphor you can't like you shout can't it at the top yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um and then it i don't think there's enough of a it direct like carry on yeah and i don't think there's a direct uh like correlation between like what it feels like to like go through obviously i've never done it myself but like Mm -hmm. i can assume kind of how that feels because i've had women in my life that have gone through it Mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like they did a like the there's not a good like yeah i feel like there were too many things trying to be communicated through this movie that that the the roads were just like it wasn't like this is what we're trying to tell you yeah it was like this 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 this, and they were getting like it couldn't find its identity yeah like it had so much stuff that it kind of wanted to say yeah and and like if the if it's about a girl turning into a woman and that uh, and that's through a period then it it didn't stick to its guns yeah. enough yeah because it decided to go too much onto other stuff to yeah. like stick to that one point yes yeah looking back i think i agree w- with what you said about it it has a lot of different roads but i don't know if it's like explicitly just periods i think it's i think it's supposed to be like uh finding yourself yeah uh, because she's she's all uh, you know all her life she had been like trying to please her mom or whatever and now she's kind of breaking out of that and she's learning that like it's okay to feel these yeah that's that's what i'm saying yeah like that's part of it that's part of what i'm saying is like and that they're they're like they're taking this movie as in like it's a movie about like a metaphor for a woman or a girl going through a period but then there's so much other stuff that like Uh, veers it off of that mm -hmm. track well no i don't think that i don't think the movie is explicitly like, because I think that's I think just that's what, what I took from I think it. That's why they talk about it. I think that's why. Well, and I don't want to get totally in, into spoilers. I guess we've it, we've already kind of talked about it. But, you know, the the mom, when she first turns red, her her mom thinks that it is her period. But then it's not. It's that she's turning into a red panda. Um, yeah. And that's and, getting into it. Yeah. Some spoiler and, stuff. Yeah, but and, and I I think that it's I think that it's. uh 
I think that's the movie acknowledging, yes, we know that this can be used as a metaphor for this, but we're not totally explicitly making it a metaphor for this, if that makes sense. But I, I don't think they communicated that well, if that was the case, though. Cause it, because it feels like the like it feels like it's trying to be a direct representation of what a girl feels like when she's going through a period but then it doesn't do it well. Oh. Well, I guess maybe that maybe we just don't agree on on that concept of it. Yeah. But Which is fair. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And that's also like what we've been hearing as like an audience. Right. Like that's what yeah. they've been telling us is mm-hmm. this is a metaphor for mm-hmm. a girl turning into a woman and and that being through a period, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to be fair, there's only one person in this room that could really justify. That's right, and it that. sucks, people. <laughs> and and even oh, I thought I was switched on you guys, but carry on. And, and even still, like, yeah, there's only one person in this room that could really like delve into that. But even then, you know, we're talking about target audience earlier. Like, you're also not Asian, so you yeah, only, and you can only I'm grown. A bit of it. <laughs> Huh? And I'm grown, yeah. but you've at, but you've at least like gone through it. So like you have, you're you're still a. I think a target audience is just women in general. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, it's just women in general. But on top of that, it's like there, there's a target audience of Asia, the Asian culture. Yeah, yeah. In America, or yeah. well, actually in Canada. In Canada, in yeah. Canada yeah. <laughs> but I mean. In my opinion, Canada's they just kind of an They did say North offspring. America yeah, in the yeah. movie. And, so. and Canada does feel like just an offspring of America. We have a very I'm similar sure they culture. I'm say that, but... No, as much no. As Sorry, th- yeah. Canadian fans. <laughs> well, there are a lot of Canadians that love America and travel here all the time. And there are a lot of Americans that travel to Canada all the time. We and love to Canadians. Canada. Up top. For One like, time. Yeah, they went for like two minutes. Listen, we were there for the a day. It was the two minutes of our lives. We What's had up? amazing pizza. Bella pizza. Yep. We went to the a mall. We t- I was going to wear my Canada shirt that, that we got there that today. Hmm. Dang it. Oh, no. How <laughs> sad. You don't get to rep Canada. I love Canada, man. My neighbors. <sighs> this is the depressing. North. Oh, yeah. Why don't you go marry it, Trevor? I, I When I was a kid, I wanted to get dual citizenship. <laughs> what? Because I thought that'd be cool. I want. I thought it'd be cool to be Canadian and American. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Trevor does a lot of things just because he thinks it'll be cool. Okay. That's true. Listen, that's accurate. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give my general thoughts. Uh, which is cool. We've talked a lot already, which is good. Yeah. Uh, I was not. I did not really like it much. I was bored. Oh. During a very large portion of the movie and thought uh this was another movie where i um felt like there weren't a lot of characters that i liked and that's a problem for me i really really liked uh the miriam Mir- i knew you would <laughs> i did she i was connecting with her who miriam it, the, the one white girl the friend the with the beanie yeah. and the flannel and in other words, this the, Tristan in high school. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I, I didn't know her. Tristan in high school, but I'm <laughs> I'm I'm just taking a random guess that the the braces and the too cool for school was one hundred percent Tristan. I didn't have braces until I was nineteen, so get off me. I, I just had bad teeth, and I looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in high school with you for that one year. That one year. Yeah. That you that. screamed my name every time you saw me. I, I like seeing you. There. I'm aware. It was fun. Mm. It, we, we must remember that time very differently. Mm. I, I yep. had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny because that's the exact opposite of what me and my brother. My brother was the older and I was the younger. Mm. And I liked seeing him in school and he would take different routes between classes every day so that he <laughs> knew that he somehow would m- miss me. If he saw yeah. me in the hallway, he decided to double back and go around a different <laughs> way. And he doesn't remember this because he has selective memory and thinks that he's a golden child that I has no issues. I remember being upset that like we didn't have lunch together. I remember <laughs> you being upset about and then, that. But there were some days when like I'd have cross country or something and we got to and I would be so excited. Mm-hmm. But also, to be fair, 
how the heck did you guys have more than one lunch period with like 35 people in your school? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they were staggered. They staggered, it, yeah. They were oh, staggered. No. We staggered our lunch because we had 2500 students in our school. Yeah, you well, guys when you have a small cafeteria, how the heck could oh, you guys no, 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 not I mean, just I mean, sit in the high school? I mean, we had we had like 300 kids or 400 kids in the high school. No, no, <laughs> no, May, maybe 200, maybe. maybe, but still like you can, and our, oh, oh, our cafeteria was small. It was really tiny. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's like we had why. a really small cafeteria. Yeah. You know how like, like school, cause you went to, we didn't even call it the cafeteria. It was the commons. The commons. Yeah. Uh, like we had 2,500 students, 600 in my graduating class, and we also called it the commons. Oh, okay. So you, but that's you just had, what your, it's called. Your commons was probably huge, though, right? Oh, yeah. It was giant. Yeah, ours see. Was, ours was probably like. Ours was literally like two of these rooms, wait, maybe. So how many how many lunch periods did you guys have? Uh, We're so off topic, but I don't are. care. I don't, I don't know. care. Six, maybe? Six or seven? Six I have no lunch idea. We had four. Oh, no, well, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Oh, okay. Well, we had four. And I was like, "There's no way that you guys had six. Well, we I'm could. T- it was a, it was Our small, lunch. It was, it was seriously. Area. We and probably we, had six tables. And you had to go through. Like we had a real small line. Mm-hmm. You would go, and you. It was like a wrap. You lined up thing. in the hallway, and yeah, it was strange. Okay. <laughs> small school probs. Yeah, That's small right. school probs. Um, I don't know what got us on this tangent, but I yeah, I was not. I, I didn't really like yeah uh, yeah I wasn't a big fan of the movie because I didn't find I didn't like a lot of the characters we got into this because mm. you you attached to Miriam yeah. yeah and I liked the friends kind mm-hmm. of for yeah. the most part the g- they were real stereotypical the they were angry friend I she stressed me out so much I liked her the most <laughs> I did not I liked her the most just because like characters like that are just fun because they're so stupid yeah like it's just it's just such a caricature of real life yeah and so like it's f- just fun to laugh at how crazy it is but um yeah i just without saying too much i was i really hated how characters in the movie acted um and i absolutely hated the mom the whole time yeah and i i thought everything that happened and i know that's might be a point but it's just so many things that are unrealistic in it just really turned me off to it Mm -hmm. and and maybe it's because i'm a white man compared to a asian girl and maybe that's why they were such a disconnect there an asian adolescent girl yeah well that's why i said asian girl i just thought it was funny instead of an asian woman it was funny oh okay well and i'm curious kind of like with with disney this is this is the second movie we've had where generational trauma is an aspect of the plot. Like we had it in Encanto mm-hmm. and now we're having it again in turning red. Um, and I think that's another reason why I didn't like Encanto as much as everyone else is because the grandma in that movie is a straight B I T C H. And, but people who are in are uh, Latina or Latino or Asian can relate I'm saying they they I've seen people say that they relate to that like to that family because of the grandma. They're like, thank you for bringing attention to like toxic generational whatever. Yeah. Well, I think the same thing's happening in this. I I mean, trust me, I know everything (laughs) you need to know about toxic parents, but but not in the Latino community. No, but oh, sorry, that was loud. Oh. Um, I'm just saying that, like, uh, yeah, I understand what it means. Like, I understand toxic, like, parents, but yeah. that doesn't mean that I just, and maybe that's why I don't like it, is yeah. because I grew up with that kind maybe of... Maybe it hits a little too close to home for you, buddy boy. I think this one, but though... I, I think it's also the fact that they, like, they just take it for so long, mm-hmm. and, like, there's no discussion or anything. I think, I, I, I think this one... Because it's an Asian family, like I, I don't know why I know this, but um, I feel like I I know deeply in my soul that um, Asian families, like she talks about bringing honor to her family, yeah, 
do you think you have a special connection to this because Mulan? Mulan, Mulan. Is your movie? Yeah. probably. <laughs> I, I I directly thought Mulan right when oh yeah yeah the honor stuff was going on. I'm like yeah, Ugh. but that's but it's so real like that like. I don't know. It's so like, people don't Asians understand. Have you talked to that? I know. <laughs> That's why I'm <laughs> saying I just feel it in my soul. But it's yeah, because Disney told you. But no, like in real life, well, I know this in real life. Yeah, like my 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 college roommate, yeah, Shido, who yeah, who's Vietnamese. Um, he yeah, his work ethic, and I didn't I didn't know his family history or anything like that. He was a foreign exchange student. I knew his American family, but uh, he. I mean, his work ethic was impeccable. And by the time that I had like finished my undergraduate and gone on to my master's, he had already finished his PhD and he's a pharmaceutical person. Now. Yeah. But so I've seen that firsthand, like that, the, the, I have to do as good as I possibly, he studied all the time. Yeah. It, we had to like wrestle him to get him to go out with us and stuff like that. And to the ground. Yeah. Oh, well, not exactly that. I know, <laughs> but you just had to drug him, right? <laughs> like, I mean, he did have <laughs> he did have drugs. He was a pharmaceutical major. Uh, well, that's not that my doesn't mean he was just pre med, but <laughs> oh, he was a pre med major. Okay, listen. All I'm trying to say is that bringing honor to your family, like, is the one thing that you must do. In that culture. And I don't know how... You how, will bring honor to us well, all. And I, I don't know how, how... I mean, I think there is a traditional... I mean, of course, we're just three white people talking about Chinese culture. Yeah, I know. Like, but I don't know how... I mean, what uh, what else are we supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know. I know. We're, we're watching the movie that Disney Plus gave us, which is a movie about an Asian culture and we're yeah, three Disney, white people. Yeah, if you so. just do a movie about white people, we won't have this problem. <laughs> just one. Can you just give us one, one Disney movie that has white people? Well, please, we need to be represented. Guys, there's, there's literally a movie called Snow White. <laughs> yeah, well, she's <laughs> Irish, okay? What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was, anyway. I was trying to make a joke. It didn't land. Snow White's albino, okay? That's not us. <laughs> she has black hair, you see? You think all the albinos have white hair? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this, let's move on. This is, we're getting weird. It was a meme, guys. Don't worry. I was, I was just oh. joking. <laughs> Obviously, there are a plethora of Disney movies about white people. Like I mean, really hot. Like what we talked about earlier in Up, where <laughs> it's just about a grumpy old white guy. <laughs> yeah, and a chubby, fat little white kid. No, he's and an a, Asian kid. Oh, or I'm sorry for Asian what American I said. Or something. Yeah. I don't have anything left to say. Non-spoiler anyway. About this movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Ethan. <laughs> <So loud. laughs> Just, just so the audience knows, this is our first time with headphones. Yes, so. yes. First time with headphones, first time with uh, with cameras in our face. Yep. Uh, and this is the first time I'm switching, so I'm sorry if uh, that's not going too well. But I'm trying my best here. And uh, Trevor's abusing our dog. No, no. A little bit. He likes it. Yeah, just a little bit there. No, he definitely. I don't think he does. I don't think he likes it. He's going to growl here in like two seconds. <laughs> Okay, so oh, yeah, Eason. we're going to uh, cut it to a little bit of a break, um, and then we're going to get into spoilers. So if you've already watched the movie, then... Keep on listening. Yeah, just keep listening. If you haven't watched it, uh, we're going to do recommendations, because I totally forgot about it. Okay. Oh, yeah. So before we cut to the break, do you guys recommend the movie? Yeah, it's cute. I like it a lot. I don't know. I... Sure. I don't. I mean, it's fine. There are so many better yeah. Pixar animated movies on Disney Plus. Yeah, this like wasn't Soul. No, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> I think Soul is better than this. Oh, I know. Yeah, like I think this is I think so too. I don't think Soul is like amazing, but like I at least like it has a deeper element to it. And this. I think this has a deeper element to it. Okay. But anyway, we'll get to spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's whatever. If you want to watch the new movie that everyone's kind of watching and, and talking about, then yeah, watch it. 
but I don't think this is going to be a Disney Pixar movie that's like going to stay with you. It's, yeah. It's fine. And that's and that's it. It's yeah. So I don't necessarily recommend it. But OK, now we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, cut it to our little break. If you're on YouTube, it's going to not be anything because we don't have YouTube forced ads. But OK, uh, we will see you guys in just a second. All right, and we are back. We're back. After that short uh, little break, um, or no break at all if you're on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to go right into spoilers so we can kind of talk about uh, the story here. So if you guys haven't watched it and you really care about all the spoilers in this movie, then. Go right into spoilers. Go it, right into them. Yeah. Well, yeah, go ahead and go right into it. What do you think? Oh, what? I swear, like you, I told you, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really fun. Um, I enjoyed seeing the duck or hearing the duck father from Kung Fu Panda as the shaman <gasps> man. That's what he was. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I, he, he's in everything. I knew he was from yeah. Kung Fu Panda, but I couldn't think of his character. Yep. Uh, I, I, Kung Fu Panda is a much better movie than this. Go watch that instead. It, I listen. It is. Kung it Fu is. is very good. I think they're good for different reasons, though. Um. I yeah the third yeah one. you're right. Kung Fu Panda does a better job of showing an adolescent person turning into a man. I Kung Fu. Kung Fu. The the only spoiler thing I can really think of. We talked a lot about this movie so far. The only spoiler thing I can really think of is, um, the mom being the size of Godzilla threw me off at the end. <laughs> they kind of they referenced it quite a few times. Well, yeah, he and said that she was big, and I guess I didn't think any, like too much of it. I I don't I want to know why. Cause she's she's just been my guess is she just has been like, like pinning that anger and stuff down mm-hmm. so much, and so it creates a bigger monster because it's supposed to be a representation of like yourself, like your wild <laughs> side, so to speak. Yeah, I was thinking of it as like big feelings. Yeah. I did like that they were s- that that the panda came out in deep emotions. Yeah, it, like but like all emotions, yeah. not just anger or whatever. Yeah. It wasn't a knockoff Hulk or anything. Oh, I think it's it's very touching when when her mom chases her home. Which by, talk about a helicopter mom in this movie. My goodness, when she or goes to the school more. Yeah, uh, but she ta- she chases her back to the house and. She's like, go away, and she turns around, and she's trying to, like, brush her hair out again. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, man, she's trying so hard. Like, she just wants to be a normal kid. Now she's got cool red hair. I did like the red hair. I thought the red, ho- red hair was cool, too. And mm-hmm. I also like how it was, like, a representation of whether or not you do have your panda inside or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that was neat. Mm-hmm. But, so the things that really made me not like the movie was just the overabundance of like bad mom stuff mm. like she was a bad mom the whole movie and i thought it was just a little much yeah when you say bad mom what do you mean like just a completely like zero awareness to anything just right off the bat with the notebook and like embarrassing her child in front of everybody and like not oh sure sure and not having like any remorse or like any understanding of like okay like what that would do and And that might be a good representation of of how some moms are but as a 25 year old right now like (laughs) sorry as our dog but as a 25 year old right now like if i was a parent i I it's pretty easy to have some sort of empathy and understanding of what your child's going through and so to have legitimately zero is just so off-putting into a movie that it, it, it tunes me out and just like, sure. it just pisses me off and tunes me out. And then that just kept happening yeah. around every and corner. And the fact that um, she couldn't tell her mom anything. Like she felt like she couldn't yeah. say anything. That says a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, and I try to explain it away a little bit when she says, I've been watching her like a hawk to like mm-hmm. look for the signs of. But yeah, I agree. I mean, the, and like I said, we've kind of talked about this already. Like, I I personally didn't experience that, so like maybe that is how it is. 
And if that is, I'm sorry for all you adolescents out there that are going through the same thing. But yeah, there uh, the notebook thing was mu- a little much. And I like the way you said she has zero like social awareness for her daughter and like the consequences that that will bring to her. But, yeah. Or remorse. Or remorse. And just, word, yeah. and just yeah. no remorse for it. Mm-hmm. And like I can understand being upset as a parent and like trying to figure out because like yeah, who's 17? She's 13. Mm-hmm. But like, if you see s- your daughter doodling in a book, you're not just gonna automatically assume they're fucking. Like, yeah, that's just such a wild escalation of oh, yeah. accusations, yeah. Yeah. and like, not even allowing the daughter to speak on it and to just jumping to that conclusion. All of that just was very off putting. And then it wasn't just that. Like, that was a starting point of like literally every single thing. I mean, yeah. the screaming. I have your pads outside the school. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. just another thing of, like, that is just so wildly outside the realm of reality and that it just completely tuned me out. Yeah. And it made me, like, okay, like, uh, this is just stupid. This is a stupid movie. That's what I thought halfway through the movie. Yeah. I'm like, because they're just making characters do stupid things over and over and over again that like it's not real yeah like i went to high school and elementary with a bunch of people and i never had a mom scream out oh you left your pads like i knew girls had periods yeah and i like like would hear like oh do you have a whatever do you have whatever or like we need this or whatever yeah i heard all that but like you don't have a mom screaming in the middle of a classroom like, it was just such a... Well, and I, I wonder if it's supposed to be, like, a comedic thing that, like, wow. just didn't land. You know yeah, I mean? it didn't. I think a lot of the comedy didn't land. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, with a lot of the mom stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I found the friend, friend group a little cringy, but, like, they're 13-year-old middle school. Yeah. So that like, was the only thing yeah. I liked, yeah. was I thought the friend group was accurate because uh they feel like it's ride or die at 13. Yeah. And right. like, they're all over the top character caricatures because you are 13 mm-hmm. and like, you are just going to dive into whatever. And I thought the twilight girl was funny and yeah. Yeah. Um, you're do you just mean the girl Pri- Priya? The the okay. Yeah. Yeah. The because she, mm-hmm. when you get introduced to her, she's, uh, she's reading like the night wolf or something, which is supposed yeah. to be twilight, but and oh, then, like, I when didn't she, notice. When they're sitting on the, like, laying down on the roof, like, she's got her her, her arms crossed like she's a mummy. Or yeah, like I that. did notice that. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure she said something at some point, like, are you a werewolf? Yeah, she said, are you a werewolf? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did, I did like that. She, no- oh, by the way, I, I did notice this, that uh, May never tells her mom that it's her friends yeah. that are that are helping her keep the panda at bay. Um, she, she just says people lies, that love me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I did I did like that a lot. I liked that, you know, because I remember like I remember having a friend group in middle school and we were like the weirdo outcast and we were cringe and we were, you know, out. You don't have to agree with me, but uh, they, I meant it like for myself. No, I, I know. <laughs> uh, so like uh, so I wore suspenders I, every day I, when I, I was in gosh. seventh grade. <laughs> I very much liked that uh, when they do see her finally as the red panda, and they're like, "This is fine. Like this is just something you're going through." You know? Yeah. They, they just weren't. They just didn't question it. Yeah, I, yeah. Like you were saying the ride or die thing earlier. Yeah, and I I, I liked the friend group. That was yeah. my favorite things about the movie. Yeah. It was the mom family dy- dynamic. Dynamic. I also I really didn't like that the dad hardly spoke. A few I, sentences. I was, I was wondering if maybe that was a like a cultural thing. No, I think or that's like just stereotypical. Might have been a better word to use. I think mm. it's just like uh, the way that um like America's making films right now that like dads are not important. Mm, like, sure. and, and like I I do have to say is that they made him important at the end because they like yeah the, the, what he the, was the one that what the dad said meant a lot to yeah Mia. May, May. May yeah. at the end but like yeah just and just the way that, and may it could just be an asian culture thing of of women like women are very uh 
strong in, in that See, culture. I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. And like I, like I said, I and I think I think you're probably more on track with the with the. That's just the way movies are at the moment. Is the mom is the strong female? It's leads. just strong female characters involved. in general. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, the dad, because there was what do we we saw something in the past few months that was like that where the dad was just like a bumbling idiot until he was needed. Luca, yeah, mm-hmm. Luke, that's yeah, right. yeah, mm-hmm. where the dad was sort of just like, yeah, until like, yeah, that they need the emotional connection thing. He says something really like profound, profound yeah. which yeah. is the exact same thing happens in no. this movie. So I guess maybe that's just where we're going. Where. Yeah, women I are the not cons- like it at all. Yeah, which is funny because then you know we talked a little bit about earlier Raya, although her dad is not very present. I mean, he's he when he is present, he's very wise, but he's not present for eighty five percent of that movie. He's yeah. dead, isn't he? Well, he's turned to stone. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I which think is basically the same thing. I guess. <laughs> I think we're just at a part at a point in like history, especially in America, where like we we want to empower women yeah and that that's fine like that's 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 good um but at uh, we're deciding to like decrease the value of a father, of a father. yeah in, in in family building and we've seen some of the issues with that and just society in general i mean a lot of the issues we have in america this has gone way too political but just yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you have a fatherless family, it, it tends to have well, a lot I of mean, issues. And and right now we're portraying movies of a very inactive father in the situation until he's like needed. Yeah. And then and I I don't know the reasoning. I it just doesn't make sense because a, a family should be everybody involved. Both parents should be actively involved. That's mm-hmm. that's the correct family structure is that a, both the father is coming in and doing things when needed and the mother is there showing a positive influence whether that's to a daughter or a son both of them need an equal amount of attention f- through both parents yeah. and like i guess recently in movies we haven't got that or maybe it just feels like we haven't got that well and it used to be in like the 90s movies and stuff it was there was no parents or there was or there was there was only one like you know when you're talking about toy story and the hot takes earlier there is only one parent and then it's just it's just Andy's mom. And then you take Bambi, who loses a parent, and then yeah, well, it's a deer. So well, what, what else? Is, well, they, Aladdin, orphan, uh, Cinderella, evil stepmom, lost her dad. Yeah, so, uh, you know. Yeah, I I can't think of anything else. Mm, but, but yeah, no, that yeah. makes sense. And so it's like now it's like okay, well now we're starting to move toward a movement where both parents are in the picture, but. Were, but because of the current, like you said, political climate, women are going to be very much empowered, which is fine. But in these current movies, it's almost like it's at the expense of a father figure. Well, and it's also the expense of women because it's making the mother out to be a, a bitch. Oh, so, sorry. like, it, you you want to have a focus of a daughter a mother daughter relationship, but you're making the daughter out, or the mother out to be this like overbearing, like mm-hmm. idiotic mm-hmm. woman. And the male, like the, the dad is just like a complacent, like, complacent I, yeah. Yeah. It is. And it's just making both genders out to be bad. And like, and maybe that's just like, you can't have a movie where like everyone's just good. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. where there's no problem because the, the there's a good a mother good and movie. there's a good father and the daughter, but like I don't know it yeah it just yeah. feels weird. Sorry, I was looking up. Um, I was just gonna look up list of Pixar films in the past year. That's funny because when uh sorry Trevor no you're fine I'm I'm doing something else anyway when I'm when I think about movies with like good parents. Um, like where both parents are equally healthy. Yeah. Um, then the movie's not about them. The movie's about the problem child. Oh sure. You know, yeah. like what? Like Finding Nemo. 
Oh, but his mom's not in that movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking of well, uh, Spontaneous. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're and not I was just Disney and Pixar. No, no, no. no. I'm yeah. thinking like in general. Yeah. Sorry. But I also feel like that's kind of a, like, spontaneous, spontaneous feels like a more accurate depiction of, like, reality. Because yeah, in, in a lot of families, like, there's still at least a semi-active mother and father. But, like, that doesn't mean that your child is going to come up, like, and, and just be able to react to everything correctly. Yeah. Like, they're still going to have struggles. I was just pointing that out. Oh, you know what, though? Uh Speaking of uh, trying to find a movie that has a good, like, familial thing, The Incredibles. Has, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, I mean, it does have problems. Like, the, the parental units do have, like, issues. Fighting like, all the time? Yeah, but but it shows them I would say, like, bickering. It. Yeah, yeah. It shows them, uh. like... Well, and there's... I mean, in the first Incredibles movie, there's hints of, like, what if your husband was maybe having an affair kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. But it also, but on the flip side, that it also shows the overcoming of it. But uh, yeah, looking at this, turning red. You're also comparing like one of the greatest Disney movies of all time, <laughs> well, like in The although, Incredibles. Listen to this. I mean, I I was just looking. I pulled up a list of Pixar movies in the past year. Turning red, you know, strong female m- mother, uh, complacent father. Luca, same thing. Soul was about an adult. Onward, strong female mother, no father. Toy Story 4, same thing with Andy, Mother, No Father. Incredibles 2, Coco, those are all, I mean, those are the last six or seven or six Pixar movies. At the hmm. moment. It, it oh, is Inside Out is also cool. strong female mother, kind of complacent <laughs> father. Yeah. 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 But I really like the dad. In Inside Out, though, yeah, I do too. But yeah. and that's the thing, though, is they don't utilize him at all. They make him right. like a like he's a good dad, but they don't like they don't show that but a good I dad think, has. But they make it a point to like they're moving there because he has a job that needs a lot of his attention. Yeah, I well, think they make that like a, a they do good at making that a point in the movie. And also, the one of the the biggest scenes I remember from that movie is. When like they they have a success with the the kid, I don't remember what happens exactly, but the uh, the f- they like go in for a kiss, and the father his like his emotions or whatever are like all right, send the signal, and then it goes to the mother's side, and they're like, oh, he's doing the thing again. So like it still is kind of giving that like mm-hmm. oh, this guy's male's, an idiot, male's but, dumb, yeah, yeah exactly. Which yeah. that sucks. Inside Out is one of my favorite Disney movies I of the last it. ten years. Mm-hmm. And it's got representing Leslie Nope, Pawnee, yeah. Indiana. Incredibles two is such a letdown. I thought it was I I thought it was oh, not as good as the first one, but it was fine. I don't even remember <laughs> it. Fun fact about that movie. Sorry, I know this is way off topic. The there is a It's what we do here. <laughs> in the uh where all the superheroes are in like, the main... Tristan, you're on a camera. You can't sleep. <laughs> I just want to put my head back, and I can't. Where all the superheroes are in, like, for the uh, the big announcement of, like, where they're on the ship, uh, the concept art for Frozone's wife, who was going to be in the first movie, they animated into Honey. a superhero in the second movie. So she's in that commons area. That's they're, cool. Yeah. She's not actually Frozone's wife, but like they used her concept art from the first movie to create that superhero. Wait, so th- she she was in a super caf- suit. She was in a cafeteria. No, you remember in the ship, like the guy that Bob. You just said common place. areas. Did I? I'm you sorry. You said common area. It's like the the big ship bridge thing where he where they're on the yachts and he's like, "We're gonna sign this to bring the heroes back," and all the heroes are there. Um, there's a superhero. That's there that they use the concept art, the unused concept art from Frozen's Wife from the first movie, and they animated it for the second movie. I'm sorry, this is so off topic. <laughs> it's but okay. Moving on. I don't. I don't really think we have too much more to to say. Um, my, I'll talk about uh, my my uh, problem. Yeah. With the roads and stuff, is that um, I oh yeah the roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like, 
she was all nervous at the beginning um, and was like giving her pads and tampons and whatever medicine stuff for a period. But, but it was like, it was like, that was the reason she was a red panda. But then, um, later it was like, there were other reasons for it. For instance, her, they were, they were like representing emotions, but then like, okay, is that representing like PMS? No, because she's that all the time. But now I don't know. It was just weird. And I, my brain doesn't working. (laughs) Yeah. It just didn't feel consistent with like, if this is trying to be a metaphor, like it's, there's not enough direct correlations to like what it's like turning into and being a red panda and going through your first period yeah, or consistency of periods. And also the fact that the whole entire thing is saying that like, you can you get can, rid of it. Yeah. You yeah. Can get I was rid just about to say that. Some sort of ritual. Yeah. And the fact that she just wants to keep it. Tell, I, tell, tell me one woman ever that'd be like, yeah, tell I'll just, me why I'll he... just, I'll just go ahead and I'll just go ahead and keep my period. So yeah. That's, that's cool. Where my I'm... friends, we all love the fact that I have periods. And that's where I'm like, uh, think, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's where you think what? I can't, my head isn't working. Oh, that it's like, okay, so if you get rid of your red panda, then do you not have big emotion? Like, do you not feel deeply? Like, do you not feel as deeply? I think you still do. I think that's where the the lore of the movie crosses over with, like, the real-life implications of having emotions. If you walk away your red panda, you can still have those emotions because your red panda is still alive. They just lock it inside some kind of piece of jewelry. Well, that's stupid. It it felt like the complete opposite to me because her mom felt emotionless emotionless yeah. Yeah. the whole entire movie yeah. until her red panda finally came out because yeah. the second she had real emotion it broke the seal of her locket yeah yeah no no it was her well yes you are correct but also her locket was, i know was cr- all right sir also her locket was cracked because it she when they all grab on to me yeah she's trying to leave and she gets tossed to the ground, and her locket is, is initially cracked because it hits the ground first. Okay, fair. Yeah. 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 It, but it, you are correct. When she can, she continues to feel those emotions, and the locket cracks further until it completely breaks. Yeah, that's what I remember. And just like, she just throughout the whole entire movie just seemed to not have like any real emotions. Yeah. And so it felt like she was locking her emotions in this locket. And, and and to me, uh, like the ending, which maybe that's what we should get to, is like, I figured it was going to be like, okay, we're all going to like accept our red panda and allow ourselves to be mm. our full selves. Yeah. And it's only M- May. Yeah. I, I do wish that more people kept their red panda, but I did like that it's not like that people did part with it. Yeah, yeah, because but all of them. Oh, yeah. I know. So I'm saying, like, I do wish that like a couple more kept it. Yeah. But I do like that they had people. Well, part it was with it. it was very off. It, well, because uh, I mean, the mom's panda was obviously a like a de- like an absolute danger to society. I mean, it was yeah. huge. It was uncontrollable. I agree with you. Yeah, it would have been cool to. See. I thought they were all going to keep it. Mm. Um, I thought they were going to just because I thought that's what was like the sacrifice for it. I thought they were going to say, okay, we all of us aunties and the grandma, we're all going to break it. And that was a cool order, scene, though, in order to, to get her in the circles, because of, out of all of us, she's the one that really needs it. Mm. Um, but then that didn't happen. And I there's did- also no explanation of why hers is so. Yeah. Large. And yeah. like uncontrollable. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, even if it's big, like, she has no control and she just, like, and that was another thing of like the mom just, like, being way out of 
like whatever. Like yeah. she was just way too much. Yeah, and that scene where she's like, I do everything right. I, you know what I'm talking about? No. She's crying in the woods. And her oh, daughter. Yeah, she's a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought maybe after that, her relationship with her mom would be different. Yeah. But it wasn't. And then I'm like, how it can you have a, a how can you have a relationship with your mom like that, and then you do the same exact thing to your kid? Yeah, I, I think that's another thing where, well, actually, I think that was the next thing I was gonna say. I did enjoy, and this is a little diversion. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, I did enjoy, and this kind of clashes again with like the lore of the movie, in terms of like the the representation of what the red panda is. I did like that the aunt, that Sun Lee, when May chooses to keep hers, Sun Lee like picks her up and takes her and they Is that like, the mom? They touch no no, it's the ancestor that initially becomes oh. you know? and they touch noses because it was like finally somebody else has like chosen to see this as a gift rather than a curse. Mm. I did like that. But that but even that scene itself kind of con- like I said, it's that mixture of the lore of the movie versus the mm-hmm. metaphor of the movie. Yeah. But um I did like though that the that the ritual was consistent in terms of like cuz they mention when it first happens they say your grandma's old fashioned but we could really sing whatever as long as you're singing from the heart and then later mm, the, yeah. the friends all get the boy band to sing together. That song was used way too much. <laughs> I I I watched this it was like the volume was up, but I watched it with subtitles because I didn't want to disturb my roommates. And uh, every time that that all for one song came on, it was the same song. It was just like different parts of it. And I was like, OK, like by the time we get to the end, I was like, I've had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> this one artificial boy band song. Right. It was pretty on par with standard boy band. Yeah, so yeah. It, it felt like a real boy <laughs> band. It did, especially like the the Aaron T and Aaron Z. They're both pretty kind of thing or whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have anything else, uh. Really, I like. I just felt like the movie was pretty bland, and the only thing I enjoyed was the friends, <laughs> and. Oh, what did we think of Tyler? The the Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like he was a he's a middle school dude that yeah. yeah. is an asshole because he doesn't like he doesn't know like he's just a 13-year-old kid. He doesn't understand like that feels about right. Yeah. Like like there are normal 13-year-old kids that just like exist. And yeah. then there are some that feel like they, Exist. yeah. And there are some that feel like they have to like put others down to mm-hmm. like. I tell you what, that was pretty gangster of him though. When he's underneath the stands and he's like, look, I've done you a favor by not telling your mom. And now you owe me a favor. I was like, Ooh, he got a point though. <laughs> he's got a point. <laughs> yeah. Well, in real life, those favors aren't just come over with the red panda. Well, of course they're not. But in this movie, I was like, okay, we get it. We we got you, my man. <laughs> no, but I'll, honestly, though, like if any middle any middle schoolers listening to this, like, no, your 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 local bully does not have a secret boy brain fetish. He's just a bully. So <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Hashtag. Sorry, I mean, you sorry. can ask him if you want, but you might get beat up. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, uh, that's about it. So I get, I think we're just ready for ratings. Tristan, what you got? Me first? Uh-huh. Two. What? What is this crap? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> two. A two. A two a out two? of five? Yeah. Jeez. Is that bad? It's just low. Not of what? I figured you were going a lot higher than that. Mm. But no, okay. Two out of five. All right. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> a two. What you... What you got, Trevor? Mine's a four, my man. I really, oh. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really well done, and I think I've made that point very clear. It's so funny because I also think this is like a two to two and a half. Okay. okay. So I was not expecting that from Tristan. I thought she was gonna be like three and a half, maybe four. Uh, give me a movie about Miriam, and then it'll be three and a half. <laughs> 
Wait, red, wait, whoa, what? Red, red panda t- or turning red to staying white. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I don't think it was anything about any of that. It's just like, I don't know. I was just bored during so much of the movie and just having so many characters that you just dislike. Even the grandma, the grandma was such like, yeah. she was so annoying yeah. for a large portion of it. And on top of that, the mom was awful. I just feel like there needs to be a more clear message and um, it, it just. Yeah, a more I clear mission, a message. And another thing is um, the whole thing that like kept May together during all this was the friend group. Mm-hmm. And like, I think the friend group was great. It was, it was like, that was my favorite part of the movie. Mm-hmm. But if your whole point is like, I'm going to go ahead and make this movie to like be here and like represent and like, yeah, for like women mm-hmm. or girls going through this time, a lot, I feel like a lot of girls don't have that Red kind pandas? of. Su- oh. They don't have that kind of support group. Yeah. And so like you're, yeah, you're so right. so you're the the whole point is to create this movie that's to help you like understand and be able to go through this moment, mm-hmm. but then you're giving them this kind of support group that's a ride or die and mm-hmm. a lot of girls don't have that. So like Yeah. So what what, what was your real point? Like what yeah. what were you like you're not really helping anybody mm-hmm. because yeah, you have the crazy mom, which is probably pretty accurate, but she was way out of touch. But then they're like, okay, well, I have the backing of my friends that'll like be there for me. But most yeah. people don't have that. Yeah. So yeah, wasn't wasn't a big fan at all, which yeah. sucks because I actually did like the trailer a lot. Mm. I was kind I of, the I was trailer, kind of excited for it. The trailer, I I thought that the that may. Because in the trailer, they, like, push that I'm my own person and I wear green clips in my hair and I do whatever I want, basically. I felt like it was the trailer. But then in the, mo- the movie, is nothing like that. Sh- that was another thing I had is she was super confident at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And then, like, her confidence just, like. Yeah. Down. Dives. Yeah. Like. Really? I didn't get that vibe. I thought so. It oh. dives until sh- like her friends like lift Hyper her up. up. Yeah. And then yeah. she's like, oh, yeah. And then she does one thing that's like uh, insane. I think she was confident in the person that her mother wanted her to be. But then. She yeah, I saw that. But yeah. then she experiences what she what she wants to be and the person and the person that she wants to be. And part of that is kind of shown, I think, with like, you know, we see her grades and when she first shows up to the temple and she's like, look, I got an A and A plus and then another A. But then when they see the, the report card and stuff are in the bed, it's like B plus mm-hmm. C, but she's also enjoying her life. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's, I think it's kind of this transformation of who, who is May and who does May want to be? Well, May wants to be this red panda and have fun with her friends and she wants to go to concerts and she wants to do all this stuff. She wants to be a bad girl. Yeah, well, not exactly a bad girl, I would say, but like her, but it's not what her mother wants. I'm the bad guy. (laughs) That's Billie Eilish. Duh, that's what they say. (laughs) I was gonna say it. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in like that. No, it's all good. Did we do ratings already? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you rated it four. Just rated it two. uh, two. I rated about two, two and a half. Yeah. I feel like probably two and a half because uh, there was still stuff enjoyable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, probably about two. Do you want to know how I rate? I get so stressed out about it. She gets really stressed. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that why you don't rate on Letterboxd? Yes. You just, yeah. You just log it? Yeah. <laughs> it takes so much for me to rate a movie. I, I don't even want to think about it. I tell you what. No and you do it every, you but here and she does it every week I for know. us. I know. I love you, fans. <laughs> um, this is what I do. I imagine myself watching the movie, and then whatever number comes to mind, that's it. Wait, Tristan, you didn't you didn't do? Should mom watch this today? Yeah, that doesn't have to be. A I thing. thought about that when I was peeing earlier. 
great. Um, well, there you go, Mom. Your inner thoughts when she's peeing. <laughs> now I'll record. That. <laughs> Ethan, I love you, Mom. Okay, well, that's about it for today's episode. Uh, we don't have plugs recorded yet, so uh, thank you guys for listening. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you guys are on YouTube, just hit the subscribe. You can be our second su- subscriber because I'm the only one that's subscribed to Woo! our YouTube because we have no videos yet until today. Uh, what, Trevor? You can find <laughs> oh Easton on Twitter at Easton Moore IB, Easton Moore 4. You can find me on uh, Twitter and, oh, and Instagram too. You can find me at Twitter and Instagram at, at T Landers Perk. You can find the movie moron on Twitter at the movie moron. I assume YouTube is the same thing. Yeah. Has Instagram been updated? Uh, no, they Has take Facebook four- been updated? Yes. Fantastic. At the movie moron. Go check it out. We would love to talk to you. Pretty much just on Art. anything. Search. Theme song. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Theme song credits. Go to the moderate sized Lebowski's, which include myself. Mr. Jared That's not Rutt- a real name. They Mid- just made it up right like which, when we were recording. As well as Mr. Jared Rutt- Rutliff at J Rutliff on Twitter and Mr. DJ Funk, who is on Facebook. I do not know if he's on Twitter, but the moderate less size of the buskies. Artwork to at Graham, G R A M, G R A M J. G R A M A N. On Twitter, go check him out. He's reached 10,000 followers. Good for him. That's definitely not his Twitter handle. Oh, listen, I'm going to look it up right now. That's his name on Twitter, right? Graman. That's his name. That's Graman. not his at. It's like uh. it's like Graham H something. Let me do this. His name is G-R-A-E-H-A-N. Oh he used to be. Oh, and then he was on Instagram. That's what we used to just give him his Instagram. But he's on Twitter. He just doesn't have Instagram anymore. Go at follow his Twitter. Graman H. Folkwald. But if you go follow at the movie moron. Uh, we have his Twitter tagged in our description. Yes. But you don't have my Twitter tagged in that description, sir. Mine is because you're married to me. That's on my personal Twitter. Mm. The movie Moron only has people that have... I am I'm only allowed so many characters, okay? Mm, apparently, the, Look, the practical it's not co- my fault that you didn't ask me to write another theme song. Easton. Apparently, the practical co-host is the same level as assistant to the regional manager. That's me. That's correct. Anyway, in, bye. The, in bye. this episode, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're ending the next episode. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back next week for I have no fucking idea. Wait, wait, no, it's on the calendar. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, hang on. <laughs> it's on the calendar. You can't reach it. Are we done yet? Not yet. The outfit. Oh, we are we are probably doing the X because the outfit looks dumb. As shit. The outfit looks <laughs> so good. How dare you? And the X looks like an amazing horror movie. No. So, well, no. We're, we're going to do the X or the outfit. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, we've we've rambled for too long. Uh, but thank you guys for listening. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye, guys. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Don't call me stupid. Right, to call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people. I've known sheep that could outwit you. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, none taken. <laughs>